Let's go to the next stage of organic food and farming. Let's go to what we're going to call regenerative organic food and farming. And what does this mean? Well, it means uh, we keep all the good rules uh, and practices that we had before. Uh, we don't want to use GMOs. We don't want to use pesticides, chemical fertilizers, sewage, sludge, uh, and so on. But we need to start focusing more on the soil, uh, on photosynthesis, on the climate crisis. Uh, and lo and behold, as we looked around, we realized that uh, if you go to this next stage of organics, regenerative, uh, you can start to draw down the excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and you can put it back uh, where it used to be in 1850 or even earlier. Well, where was that excess carbon dioxide before it was up in the atmosphere acting like a blanket, uh, heating up the planet? <coughs> well, it was in our soils. The uh, <coughs> soil organic matter, or the basically the fertility of our soils used to be much greater than it is today. Uh, and that carbon that was up in, that's up in the atmosphere now used to be down here. And the trees, uh, there used to be twice as many as there are now. Uh, and we, they're continuing to be cut down. And the programs of reforestation have not been uh, sufficient, so we say. So, 2014, a group of us uh, got together in New York City, uh, Vandana Shiva from India, the Rodale Institute, uh, Dr. Mercola's, uh, some of his staff people, <clears throat> Organic Consumers Association, some of Dr. Bronner's staff, uh, and then some of the best uh, organic farmers across the country. And we held a press conference uh, in New York. There were 400,000 people there uh, marching for uh, climate, uh, looking for the climate, saying we have to change our, our policies. And what we realized was <clears throat> two, one big task we had to accomplish was we needed to get organic farmers and consumers to start talking about the climate, uh, uh, the relationship between food and farming and <clears throat> the way we use our land and the climate. Uh, and we needed to get the climate movement, the, especially the young environmentalists and activists, to start talking about food and farming. Because the way people have talked about the climate crisis uh, in the last two decades has centered really uh, on just, okay, we use, we're burning too many fossil fuels, we gotta stop. <clears throat> and well, I guess this makes sense in a way, theoretically, this would solve the problem. But what we've seen is that the problem keeps getting worse. I think there last year there were 413 uh, parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, and when we started getting serious uh, about the climate crisis, uh, it was around uh, uh, 380, and so it's getting worse, not better. Uh, and, you know, even though there's electric cars and, you know, people are more conscious about conserving energy, uh, solar and wind power are actually more profitable nowadays than the burning fossil fuels. But, but we still, we are putting more greenhouse gases as a global community up into the atmosphere than we ever have. And so obviously, um, and it's become so politicized, it's ridiculous. You know, it's like, <clears throat> if, you, if you say the climate is, the only way we can fix this is to stop burning fossil fuels. Well, everyday people are thinking of, well, you know what, I have to drive to work uh, and I can't afford a, a Tesla, you know, an electric car and, even if I can, there's no charging stations and so on and so forth. So we're still using fossil fuels uh, as we talk about uh, eliminating them. And the bottom line, which I try to point out in my book, Grassroots Rising, which now you know a lot of people acknowledge is like 
Look, the solution to too much uh, excess carbon and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and not, <clears throat> and not enough in our soils and trees and plants uh, requires not only a transformation in the way we use energy, uh, but a transformation in the way we grow our food, a transformation in the way that consumers think about food uh, and it, connecting the dots between our health emergency, uh, which is intensifying alongside of our climate emergency and environmental pollution. We got to connect the dots between all these and solve them at the same time. So someone asked me, okay, how are we going to fix this climate problem? Uh, we're divided, uh, Republicans, Democrats, Greens, Independents, you know, these days we can barely talk to one another. Uh, that brief idea of a Green New Deal, which emerged in uh, 2018 uh, pushed, uh, you know, pushed really uh, heavily by young climate activists uh, in the U.S. and across the world. Obviously, the idea of a Green New Deal is is dead at this point. Um, and what do we do? So I think we have to uh, connect the dots between the issues. And we've got to connect uh, the different movements uh, that are now separated. Um, uh, in the United States today, they're very similar to the way it's been for decades, but you've got a natural health movement over here. You've got an, an environmental movement over here. <clears throat> you got a food movement over here. You got a good government or get corporate money out of politics movement over here. Um, you've got a, a myriad of movements, a rainbow of movements disconnected, uh, not talking to one another, not cooperating together. Uh, we have to change this. We're not gonna solve our health crisis without solving our food crisis. We're not gonna solve our climate crisis without solving our food and our health crisis. Uh, and all these uh, depend on people uh, stop being passive spectators in terms of politics and realize that we've got to take back control uh, over, our company, uh, over our country from the special interests that have captured uh, the government, especially at the federal level, that have captured our regulations. Uh, and they're dictating public policy according to not what we, the people, uh, have articulated that we want, but they're doing it in order to advance their special interests. So they don't need to all be sitting down in a room conspiring to say, well, let's degenerate public health even further because we can make more money if people will eat more junk food uh, eat out uh, in restaurants or order from Uber or whatever. Uh, they're not saying, well, let's see how far we can go with polluting the water. Uh, and let's see how far we can go with ignoring the obvious uh, catastrophic weather patterns that are showing up. We've got we've to come to terms with solving these problems uh, require looking uh, beyond our issue silos, beyond our uh, everyday concerns to looking at the big picture. Mm -hmm.